I plead without objection, without collaboration between synapses and inkwell. I bleed without direction, without conjecture. And I cry when forced to rupture the purity between the lines. I bleed when emotions overflow, atriums seeping into pathways, when lungs collapse, arresting the voice box with the straight jacket to the tongue. Your fingers are my warden. I bleed until I reach arthritis of the barrel, when the store is out of my marrow, until I'm unable to work through the sorrow. Especially when I know I will be replaced tomorrow by a family member without loyalties or morals. To protect my short lifespan, the brain freeze, when too, when too hard you squeeze the seizure, when words don't come. Fast enough out of me the suffocation. When you are finished using me, take advantage of every faint heartbeat. Because this poem will be my last cry in the first outside of your privacy. This job doesn't foster democracy. Enjoy trying to produce prophecy as I dare a blood clot of my ink. Dressed in confidence. They say he used to love her. She used to love him. But what about he used to love himself and she used to love herself? Today, her mantra in the mirror, she still loves herself. Clothed in Victoria's Secret, she feels sexy, stepped into her skinny jeans, caressing her lovely, raising her arms for a breastplate of beauty, she begins to accept her feelings. Luscious, grape-flavored lip gloss, spreading her wings in butterfly mascara. No need for blush, she can do that all by herself, wearing love in her ears and a kiss in her cartilage. She's ready to face the world of fears and wears her battle scars and freckles. Nothing can rattle her rough. She opens the door, stepping out into faith. Her new season destined to start on the anniversary of her early birth, so hopefully she can find the success for her. But they say to her, he used to love her. She used to love him. But what about he used to love himself and she used to love herself? Because in the new season, with every step of love to change the futures of children, step in front of their horrid past and good riddance to the darkened future and the perpetuated shadowed visions of the parental figures. Loving herself daily, despite of all the haters hating and the naysayers praying, she fights with dicks of layers. From the Bible she slays them. No need to be ashamed of this love. Each day the, the words bring true to separate the myth from its rule. Seasons change, her love remains the same. Be careful who dares to call her out her name in her season full of sun. You will never know when you will ever get, your, get out of your season of rain. Despite what you say, she will continue, continually be dressed in confidence and proudly claim it. is like a drug killing slowly the possibilities of better future eating away the resistance of the heart touching him an aphrodisiac pressing lips reaching the inner depths of soul kissing traveling to another world a natural unexplainable high body weak and hands shaking <coughs> entering sexual energy tension of the celibate inexperience caressing is a morphine soothing restless nerves threatening the resistance lowering inhibitions one with another body in space and time blessed by God. So talking became a stimulant of the endless. Breathing with each and every word, every silent innuendo, the cuddling became an antidepressant. But as time floats by, each breath and heartbeat becomes in sync, skin melting into each other, so sensual and free. Seeing him is like a drug, so is love, so is it love, or is addiction, or is intimacy an addiction? Oh so this is Ancient Mariner's favorite. I attempted to memorize it, but it's, it's, it's floating in my brain, so we're just going to go with it. Lesson 
I artfully advise you to address your aggressions among adversaries, avenging your agency from angry assaults, battling brutal parading billboards of bigotry, belittering belligerents with beautiful caring, causing callous cruelty to cease. Demanding dominance in daily diaries of dutiful diligence, declaring disastrous defeat by empathy. Enveloping environments with emotions enraging evil endlessly, expiring fights of full fervent fuelties of fury, finally free from fiery fabrications, feeling feisty full of fearlessness, focus on your families, giving gallant goals to girls and guys, glorifying great gifts of helping, healing, hope, holding hard to histories of heavy hearts, Heading to hear hallelujahs of health, inspiration and intelligence inside individuals ensuring justice, and jewels of joy without jading kinetic knowledge, kudos, kindness, languages of love, life, and liberty. Your longing for listful, lingering moments of major majesty, managing mean messages of malingering nasty notes, nesting in the overpowering opposition, opening and overturning objections, obliterating the ostracizing overtures. So please perfectly play, purposefully place peace, patiently picking perceptionally perfect pupils as presidents and priests of pristine personality and perseverance to the pressing public. Quietly quelling qualities of questioning, raging ra radicals, reveling against reverencing record-making reports, riling red steaming stalemates of sinking smarts, and sizzling their stank statements in solace. So stand strong in style and soft sentiments, sticking without swaying, singing your songs of sanctification and strength, splitting tiles and tribulations tastefully and tactfully. Trust my teachings, understanding unconditionally uniqueness unparalleled in the universe, vicariously, victoriously vibrant and voluminous. Willingly wear your worth, wonderfully whisper, wistfully and not wavering, and wandering in your wilderness. Exonerate xenodiagnoses for your xenographs, yielding your youth. As you are forever young, yearn for zeal and zest. This is my lesson plan for life. <laughs> so, this one is called Make Room. Remember what I said. I am kind, I am smart, I am important. Little able-bodied, great big mind, a serious daring starts from within, so let your light shine. Jaded age will come in time, so for right now, let your light shine. This world is not for you to hold back the truth. Youth is not a curse, it's a blessing on the earth, so you only will lose if you don't use them. Your imagination is a transport, of the ideas trapped inside, it's not illegal to think with your mind. Your vision is your clue to the amazings inside of you. Despite naysaying, this life is yours to be playing, so let your light shine. Just because history has a ceiling doesn't mean the prison has to keep on living. You'd be surprised at the miracles that live inside. Superman and Superwoman never gave up before their time, so keep striving for your stars. Soon you'll reach the sky because nothing is impossible. Put your heart and mind in it because this life is yours to live, so don't lose your grip. Don't just start, persevere until you finish and write your story that has yet to be written. Have the courage to be different. Make the future better than the one your current block is dreaming, so if you believe it, you can conceive it. And if you conceive it, you will receive it. So remember what I said. You are kind, you are smart, you are important. I hear you saying when they're not listening, as you trailblaze by, there's one thing you can testify and proclaim it nice and high, far and wide, so tell your haters to step aside because they need to make room for your fire. You can plug your book. Yes, this is my second book, Side Piece Sanctifications. It's about love, loss, and scandal, all that in one little book. Um, my first book is My Journey Through Poetry. had a little bit of some of that from the poems I read earlier. Uh, I guess I can end it with one of my favorites. Evaporate. 
When you speak, I want to be your essence. So I can resonate in your mouth, sizzling tingle to your tongue, I want to be your peas. So I can press against your lips. I want to be your peas and essence together so I can be your secret whispers, contaminating the unwelcome listeners, blessing the deserving dreamers. So when you write, I want to be your fingers. So I can know the power of your touch, first-hand glimpse of greatness between the lines, second-hand witness of majesty for, of your healing caress. So when you think, I want to be your brain, controlling the frontal to aid in planning our future and being movement when we dance, touching the parietal so that I can erase your pain, raising your temperature when I come into a room, easing into your temporal so that I can replay and replay our memories and my soothing voice in your ear, obstructing the occipital of all the horrific tragedies. When you see your vision, I want to be your eyes. To behold the look of destiny, front row seat in your dreams, I want to be your eyelashes. To Eskimo kiss our kids, to make all negativity disappear. When you breathe, I want to be your lungs, so I can be filled with all your being, transformed like diamonds to radiate the air. But you don't know, I want to be your nose. First one to be blessed with a whiff of your cologne, next to witness changes in hormones as your scent draws me nearer and nearer, becoming stronger as you come closer and closer. When you listen, I want to be your eardrum, making sweet music in the canal, stealing underlying sentiments, savoring leftover cadence of those worthy enough to grace you with conversation. When you smile, I want to be your teeth, so I can brighten this dark world, lighten up a room, locking bodies in a shadow box with no capability to move. So when you love, I want to be your heart, so I can jump, skip, and race when you see me, so I can be stone as to discern who not to waste your life on. But for now, when you hold me, I evaporate into you, into warmth and safety. A fortress is how you protect me. And just so you know, on a wedding day, you can't find me. I've evaporated into your heart and soul, where God said is my final place to reside.